Good evening, friends of the Ramsey Loft. As you can see, it's dark outside. We have had a long, busy cleaning day. I'm very tired. So is everyone in here. Some quick updates. Uh, an update on Mr. Jet. While we were cleaning the loft, we let him out of his flight, or out of his hospital cage. And he energetically joined the flock, came out, ate food, sat in his nest box for a little while, went on the porch, enjoyed him some sunshine. Generally hung out until he wore himself out and went to get in the nest box with his, with his wife, who apparently missed him. <clears throat> Got in the box with him, started preening him to make him feel better. Unfortunately, I cannot let him stay fully out of the quarantine box, or the hospital cage yet. I'm sorry, this does not count as a proper quarantine. He's basically just in there to bulk back up, and he just had his, his food and water dishes refilled. <clears throat> that way he has access to whatever he wants until tomorrow when we let him out again. We have decided to mitigate as much stress as possible, help him recover, help him bulk back up. He will be, he will stay in the hospital cage at night where he can have access to food and water that nobody else has access to and basically be guaranteed a place to rest unharassed by other birds. He will definitely not be able to travel this Monday, but if he continues to perk up like he has been, it is possible he'll be able to go home next Monday. Back to the loft that sent him to us in the first place, he is apparently dearly missed. And how could you not absolutely love such a sweet-tempered, gorgeous bird? Now, our other update, we'll come over here and bother Bobby from a distance. Bobby is comfortably one footing. Oh, I was a little worried for a bit. She seems to be a little bit more herself. All the same, I would still encourage her people to, to push back their visit. I think it's too early for me to declare her fine and say that, yeah, sure, she can go right home. I would rather be absolutely certain. <clears throat> her... Again, not concerned about anything contagious because, well, you can see the rest of the loft. The rest of the loft is comfortable and normal and happy and content. But something that worries me about Bobby's history in particular is that her mother died of a calcified heart. She just dropped a one day and we took her we took her to the vet to be necropsied and her little heart literally turned to stone so Bobby suddenly acting funny with no warning could be warning for me to be aware of something congenital We will have to see. But right now, she's upset that I'm too close, but otherwise comfy next to her husband. You can see the happy little forehead poof. I'll see if I can move to the, to the side here. So you can see it in profile when she relaxes again. How fluffy her little forehead is. A pigeon's forehead only gets fluffy when they're, when they're contented. Next to Luca, she feels safe and comfortable. She's on two feet because I'm too close, 
but when she relaxes and goes up on one foot, that is a sign of a happy pigeon. PJ and Escher seem to have officially claimed this box. We will see if there is further contention over it. He still seems to be protecting this box, not because he actually wants to use it, but because he doesn't want next door neighbors. Papillon is sometimes allowed in this box, but sometimes fights with Vinny. Ellie has been trying to steal her parents' box all day, and they have repeatedly chased her out of it. Tandy and Emilio look to have moved into one of the high-ranking boxes. Now, Luca is definitely going home on Monday. So, <clears throat> that will be another disruption Bobby will just have to deal with, unfortunately. But once he goes, I'm pretty sure there's also going to be a struggle for that box between Emilio and Vinny and probably also Lily. Oh, look at the sleepy Gus. The sleepy Gus. Can I preen you? Can I preen this Gus Gus? Yeah. Oh, I can print this Gus. Print her little head, her little neck. Oh, oh what a sweet Gus. You don't believe she's almost six months old. What a sweet Gus Gus. What a sweet Gus Gus girl. And look at her little forehead feathers. The more I preen her, the more fluffy those get. That's a happy Gus. That's a happy Gus. We're going to try and see him in profile so you can really see the fluff that she gets going. The happy squinty Gus. The happy squinty Gus. Being all preened. What a good girl. I got your face. Yeah. So this to a female pigeon is interpreted as kissing. A male pigeon will try to gently gum your fingertips. I don't have any males in here that want me to cuddle with them to that degree. <laughs> this is such a happy cause. Look at her floofy forehead and her pretty little pupils. Oh, she's so sleepy. I'll let her sleep in. Hi, Sony. What a sleepy Sammy. That a small contented boy? Oh, look at that snacky beak. Yeah. <laughs> That's another expression of sleepy contentment in pigeons. Here's Cookie contentedly one footing. Oh, there's a whole line of contented one footing. <laughs> Cookie, her little husband Pippin, who made it with her again today. That little pudding. <laughs> Lily is firmly on two feet. It's sleepy time. He's fighting sleep. Oh, oh, a fluffy, contented one foot boy. This is the supremely happy poof. <laughs> I don't know if the video quality is good enough that you could see his chest and his little head and his little shoulders all poof up. Let's see if he can, if he'll let me get a shot from here. Yep. So if he weren't feeling good, his little head would be hunched, his little hackles might be up. But this is a comfortable, happy boy. Everyone got vaccines last night, <laughs> their first for PMV. Uh, thank you again to a wonderful patron on Patreon who donated the entirety of the cost of that vaccine and it's shipping privately outside of their regular Patreon contributions. 
I was floored, y'all. Like, just completely, utterly floored because that, uh, the vaccine vial of about a hundred doses. Oh. And there's Bobby feeling a little more herself. Oh, poof. There's that comfy poof. She's feeling well enough to flirt with her husband a little bit all sleepy. Birds that don't feel good definitely do not nod back and forth at their hubby. <clears throat> I think the... Oh, she's nest dancing. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's what that little side-to-side -side shuffle is. They take their little feet and they push out the bedding out from under their little feet. And that helps make a cup in the middle of the twigs and straw and leaves and what have you that they collect for nest material. So she apparently is feeling herself. That's good. She also very much wants Luca to try and mate with her again. She's actually partially crouched. And you can see her little vent, her tail feathers all floofed out. Nope, nope, now she's settling back into the nest pit she's made. Oh, okay, what a relief. All the same, I don't want to stress her any more than I have to, so I'll get back with her people tonight. Tandy and her Emilio. They're so cute. I'm excited for eggs from them soon. Cookie's still in the same spot, one footing, and so is Puddin'. Oh, I remember what I was saying. I was saying that the the vial of vaccines, both for PMV and for paramic or paratyphoid, paramyxovirus and paratyphoid, respectively, cost one hundred and thirty nine dollars in and of themselves, and have to be shipped chilled overnight which costs a further 30 something. So the total comes out to 173 and some change. That was a significant donation. And again, floored, completely floored. God bless the generosity of the people who love these birds. It always amazes me to know that someone out there loves them as much as I do and cares enough about them to want to know how they're doing and to help with their well help maintain their well-being you are all wonderful thank you guys so 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 much I will have to do a vaccination video at some point Everybody here is going to need their boosters for PMV in three weeks. I am severely phobic of needles. Hearing the word, even if I'm the one saying it, makes me feel sick to my stomach. <clears throat> Actually seeing the things freezes me in terror. So... I have to just power through that because honestly I don't have an option. If I don't vaccinate the birds, the birds do not get vaccinated. And it would be one thing if this were a completely closed loft and it were just these birds coming in and their children going out. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is that we are also a rescue loft. That means that we will be taking in birds that are sick, birds that are injured. They might be former racers, like Bird Bird. They might be ferals, like that little pippet. We have no idea where they're going to come from, and what their background is going to be, and what they've been exposed to, what parasites they may be carrying. So, I have to power through that phobia and inject every single bird in here who is six weeks old or older, one at the time, until they're all done. I cannot take a break because if I stop, I won't be able to start again. 
So I've just got to power through um, all 32 of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like there's just nothing else for it. I can't get a vet to do that. For one thing, they don't have access to the vaccines. I've got to buy those myself. And having them spend the time to administer them all would cost us an arm and a leg and make feeding them harder. <laughs> Vinny is having an argument with his dad. Ooh, I know. A little fuss muffin. They argue every time they come down together because Vinny wants the nest box that his dad has. That is the nest box he was raised in, and now he wants it for his wife. He hasn't selected a wife yet. But he wants to have a box ready for her when he does. And he has realized now that he is bigger than his dad, significantly, because his... Some of you may remember Money Penny, the, uh, the show-type racing homer that we used to have. She's Vinny's mother. And Vinny inherited the vast majority of her build. He's a tough young man. He's a tough young man. Okay, it is date night. I need to go get ready to go out and have a nice time with my husband before it gets too late to do that. So, thank you to my darling subscribers here on YouTube. If you have not subscribed yet, I am so sorry. You must get so tired of hearing this garbage. Please do. Please ring the stupid freaking bell. <sighs> thank you to my patrons on Patreon. To the friends of my business, business, <laughs> friends of my business page on Facebook. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> and our followers on Tumblr, on Instagram, and on Twitter. <clears throat> we post fewer videos on our Instagram, generally speaking. But there are short little snippets of cleaning days and playing with birds and dealing with squeakers and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, for, your, for all of your contributions, both financial and intellectual, no really. Without you guys asking questions, my research would not have grown as varied as it is. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I will see you next time.